Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You may have run into this where you had a compromised system, but really the system wasn't configured with any kind of central logging and, well, uh, not really configured much for security at all. So how do you analyze an event like this? Well, in the Windows world, you have a pretty interesting tool, as Mark points out, the System Resource Utilization Monitor. Problem with that was, uh, well, uh, the file it leaves with all the information, there wasn't really a convenient way to access the data short of buying the fairly expensive NCASE product. To help with that, Mark wrote a little program that will dump the information from this file into an Excel spreadsheet and then will allow you to review it. You'll get a lot of details about uh, which programs were started and who started them and lots of context around that. And of course, the tool is available for free. Mark has a GitHub repository from which you can download it. And Docker released a security announcement and with that an update to Docker version 1.12.6, this update fixes a privilege escalation vulnerability that could allow an attacker to escape out of a container. Now, usually privilege escalation vulnerabilities aren't really all that super critical, but in this particular case, because Docker is often used to isolate untrusted processes, it's probably something that you would like to address rather quickly. And then we have yet another reminder how important it is to keep track of your DNS configuration. In this latest example, the problem was that a domain that was used by a name server was expiring, so an attacker was able to take over that domain set up a replacement name server and because that particular host name was still listed as one of the valid name servers for the domain, of course, it's just a matter of time for someone to use that name server and retrieve the wrong IP address. So pretty simple operational issues, nothing high tech here that led to uh, this particular failure of uh, DNS resolutions. Luckily, it was a researcher who did it, who didn't have any ill intent and notified the vulnerable organization. And yesterday I mentioned that GoDaddy had to revoke about 6,000 different certificates. Well, they said they revoked them on January 10th. I'm still waiting for the spike in their certificate revocation list. I thought originally we had a small spike around January 4th, but it wasn't related to GoDaddy. So not really sure what's going on there. If they're delaying the actual revocation in order to give their customers more time to swap out certificates, or if they're not revoking certificates, if they're able to reach a customer and then later verify that they got the correct domain. But to help me a little bit with this, I did update our certificate revocation data. I'll add a link again to the show notes. It lists for each day how many certificates were revoked based on certificate revocation lists. And you can now also click on the data point and see the top five CAs that revoked certificates on that particular day. And the shadow brokers did release more of the tools they allegedly stole from the NSA for free. Now, these are some Windows hacking tools. Haven't had a look at them yet uh, to look in detail uh, what exploits uh, they're trying to take advantage of, but uh, appears that they are already being detected by antivirus. Now, while some of the tools that this group released earlier, in particular, some of these uh, router exploits uh, were working and uh, quite interesting, not really clear what's in these Windows exploits. Now, I would uh, really be very careful careful in touching any of these exploits. If you want to play with them, treat them as malware. And Japan's National Institute of Informatics warns that it is certainly possible to extract fingerprints from selfie photos 
if the fingers are well lit and in focus and that happens in particular if you sort of take a picture with for example displaying the peace sign with your fingers then particularly the index finger which is of course often used for fingerprint authentication can be clearly visible. Now this is not fundamentally new about a year ago at the Chaos Computing Conference in Germany there was a demo where they actually reconstructed German's Secretary of Defense's uh, fingerprint by looking at press photographs of her. However, these were high quality photographs that you usually see done by professional photographers. In this Japanese case, they were more looking at social media sites. The other variable here, of course, is also the quality of the fingerprint reader. Some in particular, the ones where you swipe the finger over sort of a small fingerprint reader, sometimes don't have a very high resolution. So even a lower quality fingerprint may be able to fool those readers. Well, that's it for today. Uh, next week, I'll be in Brussels, uh, Belgium. And if you happen to be in Brussels, there are actually two evening events. Uh, first on Monday, there's our community night. It's it's uh, pretty much open for anybody. Not sure if you have to register. I'll also give a talk on Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. If you're interested in that, uh, send me an email or use our contact page on the United Storm Center website and I'll let you know if you have any seats available. On the community night, by the way, uh, Didier Stevens, uh, one of our ISC handlers, is going uh, to talk about security tools. And he's, of course, a big Python coder, so he'll probably talk about some of that. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.